Bless the Lord. Welcome to Fellowship Church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the excellent weather that we had. And we're going to have this the rest of this week. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your spirit moving in our midst. And that your spirit still moves today, Lord. So, Father, move in our hearts tonight. Help us to glorify you with our with our praise tonight. In Jesus' name. Sing the name of Jesus here, and there's something about that name. Because God determined it to be so. That's not just a human thing. Oh, the name of Jesus, it does. The name of Jesus means something to me personally. But there's something about that name because God made it so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. heaven on earth even under the earth that Jesus is Lord Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father amen hallelujah Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one Jesus 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 risen and exalted one Jesus Jesus, your name is like honey on my lips, your spirit like water to my soul, your word is a lamp unto my feet, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, risen and exalted one, Jesus, your name is like honey on my lips, your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. 
Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, Jesus, something about that name, the holy and anointed one, risen and exalted one, merciful and gracious one, Jesus. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Yeah. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want for me. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. And take my will, take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Yeah. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want for me. Oh, it's your will for me, Lord. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. And take my will, take my will, God, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, take my will, God, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. In Romans 8, Paul talks about those he foreknew, he predestined, those he predestined, he justified those he justified he also glorified when he says those he foreknew he predestined he predestined them to be conformed to the image of his son so that's what we're singing about here we're asking God to conform us to the image of his son so let's make this our prayer hallelujah take my heart and form it and take my mind Oh, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, 
to yours, O oh Lord. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Let's sing that together. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And we'll let him work in our hearts to conform us into his image. That's the ultimate way that we love Jesus, becoming like him. Amen. So, Father, we ask you that tonight. And we ask you to answer our prayers so that our joy may be complete. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Everybody said amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Father. We're going to have a, we're gonna have a time of prayer now. Uh, is that you? Okay. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, thank you for answering our prayers as well. And uh, we know that your spirit is here with us. And because of the blood of Jesus and, and the resurrection of Jesus, we can come before your throne of grace. So we ask you to hear our prayers now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, brother. I always get excited Wednesday night, and we have uh, several people on YouTube that watch us, are faithful, and that is a blessing and that is encouragement. We're going to look over several of our prayer lists today. Our uh, grandson, Emery, has uh, the RSV virus, but the blessing is he's a year and a half old, but what happens, the, the blood, go, I mean, the, the uh, oxygen level goes down, and it was at like 88 or something earlier in the week, and so they've given him several treatments. But the blessing is he's been in the hospital all week, but he came home. Last week, my daughter Cheryl was in the hospital for, what, about 24 hours, Anna? And she's back home doing better. And uh, so we're praising God for answered prayer. Reds Corley, a lot of you know that name. He has been in charge of our track ministry for probably 15 years. And uh, he got very sick. He gave me his testimony I want to share with you for a minute. His, uh, he said that his uh, grandson said, I want to go to church. And him and his wife had never really went to church. So he started going. And he said the first day he got there, he thought, well, you know what? I need a Bible. He said, I think I'll just steal a Bible here. Steal a Bible. And then he got to thinking about it and he said, you know, that's not really right for me to steal a Bible. So he went to a Christian bookstore and he bought a Bible and the owner of the Christian bookstore put a gospel track in with a Bible. So when he got home, he read that track and he got saved. Isn't that a blessing? So he's been in charge of our track ministry every, ever since, and he's done an amazing job. And uh, he told me uh, this past week that now he has to uh, uh, carry an oxygen bottle with him, and he's having trouble walking, 
and he doesn't think he can walk from the parking lot to in here. So, Lord Jesus, we just pray for Reds, and we thank you for his labor and of love and his care and the many tracks that have been given from here. Uh, I think we may have given out four or 500 this past Saturday, and we thank you for that. We love you, Lord Jesus. We just pray for our prayer list that you would uh, take care of uh, uh, our needs and uh, bless those that are sick, encourage people tonight, uh, and give all of us some happy surprises the rest of this week. Can I get an amen? amen. We're going to pray for Maddie Anderson, uh, Caleb Bailey. Uh, many of these have been on the prayer list for quite some time. We're just going to keep on knocking. We're going to pray for Charles, who's a little under the weather tonight. So we pray for Charles, Carolyn Beeman, uh, Gary, uh, I believe that's her son and family, Joshua Beluzzi praying for him, Debbie Boer, Jill Brady, Dana Brown, Jacob Burke, Doris Chester, Helen and Rusty Cooper, Denise Coberson, uh, Haley uh, Donantelli, also Cheryl Farrar, uh, Sheila Farmer, Tim Fry, who had the heart transplant. He's got a pump now and it's working well. Yvonne Gibson, uh, Bethany Rick, uh, and their two children, Gibsons. Um, also, uh, Rick Rajanashek, Jesse Gilroy, Penny Griffith, uh, Dory Hardesty, Donna's sister, Kimberly and her father, Chuck Harris, my cousins, Dale Hay, Christopher DeLego, Mary Hoffman, Joseph Houston, Sarah Eisenhart, uh, Jimmy Jenkins, Glenn Jones, Kelly and family, Joseph, Robin Keyes, Keith uh, King, Ginger and A.J. Conigan, Carrie Langley, Fred and Nellie uh, Linder, A. Major, uh, the Malberg family, praying for them. You bless them. Carolyn McConkey, Bill and uh, children, uh, Conigal. Also praying for Morris and Mike, um, Charles Newman and family, Eric and Jenny Olson, Terry Price, also for, who got saved about two months ago, praise God, in his 70s. Julie Rowley and family, Melissa Reese, uh, Owen Riley, Brian and Brooklyn Tyler, the Roberts family, also uh, the Santucci family, Melissa Sechrist, my daughter Melissa, praying that her house sells in Florida, also Betty Stepp, oh my, what a sweet woman of God. I'm jumping around a little bit, I'm on the far right up topper, up top. Betty Stepp is in her late 80s. I went to visit her, and her three children have been such a joy to my heart because they've never forgotten Mama. They live far away, but they travel here to uh, right up near uh, Bob, uh, Ev Bob Evans' restaurant. There's a hotel behind it and uh, a nursing home, but they've it's just been sweet to watch them with their mom. And we do pray for her. It looks like she may be leaving here soon to go with her family on the other side. And we're going to pray for Aiden Sweeney. Rejoice, praying for her who was injured at school by a student. Barb Tuttle and Jerry Weaverling. Good to see Jerry. Bob Wynn, uh, Carla Whitley, Michelle Waddell, Crystal and Ariel Younger. Ariel has COVID again, so we pray for Ariel, and Lord, that um, John would not catch that. Also praying for um, Israel and the countries throughout the world to know the peace of God and to allow the Lord to work in their hearts to stop the persecution of Christians and Jews around the world 
I would pray for our military, uh, Jacob Houston, Air Force, uh, Baldo, Ashley Baldo, Air Force, praying for, um, let's see, uh, Brandon Hardesty, Charlie Burke, whose brother, Tyler, got saved here last Sunday. Praise God. Adam Corey and the Navy, Jimmy Hudson, Air Force, Billy Heath, Army, Major Billy Heath, praying for him. Also for um, Anthony um, Baldo and the Army, do pray for those families, Lord. Also, uh, jumping back to the top on the right, the left, uh, right side, um, Lowell Moore, Ellie Moore for surgery, Jerry Muchow and Linda, uh, Tyler Morris, uh, Michelle Park, Miss Purdy, Andy and Carolyn Rander, Emily Remo, Debbie, Paul, and Samantha Roberts. Also for Stephen uh, Russell, Eleanor Sayers, Ed Smith and his brother. Also for uh, Jim Bowie. Uh, going through a lot of pain this week. Also, my son-in-law, uh, uh, Richard Sessions, going through also a lot of pain after a shoulder operation. John and Tex T, Lane Turner, Glenda Verily's mama. Also for Geneva, Wesley Re uh, Reds' wife. Nancy Willis, Robbie and Madison Williams. John Winborn. And now the last column on the left side, praying for uh, Anderson, Garnett Anderson and her son, Terry Aberson, also for uh, Ellsworth Baker, Dottie Bedell, Patty and family, Beerly, Jane, Jan Bice and her family, Carol and her father, Alton Bowie, also for Catherine's sister, Donna, uh, Catherine Birch, uh, Harry and Roxanne Berger, Becky Cheney, Reds, again, Corley, Marissa Crown, uh, Dawn DiGirolamo um, with cancer. Also praying for Ashley and sons, Aiden and Emery Enstrom, Faye Farmer, uh, Owen Feldman, Curtis George, Mary Gibson, also for David uh, Gilroy, Linda Grady, Joan and Steve Hall, also for Tommy and Lisa Harris and family, Jordan and Baby Hart, also for Doreen Headings, Madeline Hoffer, Ed Horn, praying for him. Lord, I just pray he's doing better. Tony en Ensco. Also for Vince James and his family. Also we have um, uh, Joey and Mary, uh, Maria Jones and her son Chuck, Maddie Kelly, Doug King. Also for Margaret King, Stan, and I do pray for, uh, that would be Judy King. I pray that they've gotten her car figured out and fixed. Stan Kacheski, his brother and mom, Cindy Lieberling, uh, Ken and Lorraine Mayhem. I haven't talked to her in a while. Pray she's doing okay. Uh, Jeffrey Matheo, Ella, and Evan Ma Mason. Uh, two more of our grandkids. Praise God. Kira McClure, Denise and Doug McElwee, Donna's sister. Uh, Al and Mary Jane Mills. Heavenly Father, we thank you for answered prayer. And you said, ask, and we shall receive. And we have not because we ask not. We're asking you to answer these prayers, bless these people, those for salvation at the top of our list. We pray, Lord, you would save their souls. We love you, Lord Jesus. In your name we ask these things. Amen. Is there anyone that we need to add to the prayer list that maybe you have a burden or a friend or a family member that you'd like us to put on this prayer list tonight? Anyone at all? Anyone? Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we ask these things. Amen. Well, I have a surprise for you. I have a, a, a friend.
friend of mine, an evangelist, is going to come up and preach to us. Come on up, brother. Testing. Is it working? No. No? <laughs> I'll have to get another one. Thank you, brother. Sorry, I dropped it. Thing's slippery. So, uh, good evening, Fellowship Church. How are we doing? <laughs> Welcome all those who can make it tonight, as well as those online. I know there's a lot of people online. This pastor was telling me, how many do you say usually? Thirty, forty, uh, and, and that's counting households, right? right. So that's that could be even greater. That's great. That's amazing. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. How's everybody feeling? Good. I'll tell you, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> it's been a busy week, but a good week. We're only halfway through. <laughs> Trunk or treat was good. There's a lot of people come up. Did we get a head count for how many we were there? Uh, you know, I don't know how many there were. But well, we had five saved Saturday morning at Zoom. That's great. And a tremendous, amazing service. And then Sunday morning we had three wonderful people get saved. That was wonderful. Yeah. Well, <coughs> we're over 500 today. Over 500 at Trunk or Treat? Yeah. That's wow. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so what can be better than to gather together in fellowship and worship the Lord tonight, right? Amen. Uh, so today, or rather tonight, I wanted to talk about what is good. We all know what's good, right? Who can tell me what's good? Either a definition or just something good going on in your life? Just real quick. Pastor. Life is good. Anyone else on this side? Yes. The Lord is good. Everything that pleases the Lord is good. Genuine people in your life. Having genuine people in your life. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. Bill, anything? Whatever is obedient to what is written in the scriptures. Amen. Obedience to what is written in the scriptures. So, it's pretty easy to define good and describe something as good. Uh, so it often, I mean, not often, but it catches me off guard when Scripture does it from time to time. Uh, like, why do we need to be told this? How, how could we forget that something is good? There's a lot of things that Scripture describes as good, um, but I wanted to begin with a simple truth from Scripture that comes from the book of Psalms. And some of you might know I like to listen to the Psalms. If you look for them, there are actually many bands, musicians, singers, uh, that a large percentage of what they do is sing the psalms or set them to music. And I like to listen to them when something, uh, I like to listen to them because when something's set to music, it helps it stick in your mind, right? We do this in school. Uh, I remember listening to and having to sing along to these terrible grammar songs growing up in elementary school. I hated them. It was the worst part of my day. But, I'll tell you what, I can still remember them. Uh, so, the book of Psalms is actually a book of songs. They are meant to be sung. Uh, this is what we're commanded to do in Scripture. Ephesians 5.19 says, uh, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And praise the Lord that His Word is not like terrible grammar songs, you know? <laughs> Amen. All that to say is I was listening to some music, and it led me to a song based on Psalm 92, and it stuck with me. I want to do a quick reading of that, and then we're going to uh, get to what we'll be talking about today. So I'm going to read Psalm 92, 1 through 5, just the beginning section of it, but it's good. So it starts off, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. 
to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For you, O Lord, or for thou, O Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. <clears throat> so, it's a simple truth that it's good to give thanks to the Lord. Uh, the reason it's stuck to me is because it's simple, almost too simple. Like, do we really need to be reminded of that? Giving thanks to the Lord is just something we do. Uh, we just did it. We came in here, Mr. Farmer sang a couple worship songs. We sang along, and that was good. That was good. And we gave thanks to the Lord. Why do we do that? Why do we give thanks to the Lord? Anybody? Because of his goodness. What else? The Bible tells us to. That's always a good answer. <laughs> Here's what I came up with. I said, we give thanks to the Lord because he is good. He made us. He sustains us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross in our place so that our sins can be forgiven, so that we can have eternal life in him. There's a lot to be thankful for. There's a lot to be thankful for. So today I wanted to talk about simple truths from Scripture, things we talk about day in, day out, things we should already know. Uh, how many of you guys come to church and when the preacher, not, not you, <laughs> sometimes you're in there and the preacher comes in and you're like, I've heard this before, we've talked about this before, why are we doing it again? Because it's important, right? Uh, so it's good to be reminded of these things. Uh, even Scripture reminds us of these things. God's given us his word to study, to learn, because it's useful every day. And scripture reminds us it's good to be reminded of the things we know already, particularly the things of God. 2 Peter 1, 12 through 15 says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up, by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. The Apostle Peter, before he died, sent one last message to believers to remind them of some things that even he says that they are firmly established in. Things that they knew and knew well, but he wanted to remind them so that they might always remember them, even after he was gone. And I think he was pretty successful, right? We still have the book of Second Peter. We, they preserve that well. We still talk about that. And praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> so we know that it's good to give thanks to the Lord. We know it's good to be reminded of the things of the Lord. And we know that the Lord himself is good. Scripture attests to this fact again and again. If you look up Psalm 107.1, which is my favorite of the Psalms. 1 Chronicles 16.34, Psalm 118.1, Psalm 136.1. You don't need to look them up, look those up, because if you did, you'd see that they all say the exact same thing, where it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We find that phrase all throughout Scripture. And when Scripture repeats itself, it's like, hey, maybe we should, maybe we should take note of that, right? Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So God is good. 1 John 1, 5 says that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. He has no evil in him. Goodness and righteousness is his nature. He is the standard by which we judge what is good. Things are good because God calls them good. In fact, when he created the world, Genesis 1, 31, it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was? He said it was very good. But still, he said <laughs> after everything, he's like, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's very good. And that's the next point. God made everything, and everything he made was good. He made the world, the animals, the plants, you, me, the air we breathe. The planets, the stars. Yes, sir. What was not good? Oh, for man to be alone. Amen. Amen. But he made, 
He made the world, the animals, the plants, you, me, the air we breathe, the planets, the stars. All of it was good. Like I said, one thing was not good. <laughs> he fixed that pretty quick, didn't he? Didn't even take a day. <laughs> uh, so I understand that the world today is a screwed up place, filled with unrighteousness and sin. You can just look at the news and everything's crazy. It wasn't always that way. We were the ones that screwed it up, rather Adam and Eve people. We disobey God's command, and as we go through scripture and history, we see things spiral out of control into more and more unrighteousness, and it's easy to realize that while God is good, we are not. We are broken. All of us have sinned and failed to live up to God's standard. Scripture says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. And in spite of this unrighteousness, this disobedience, God shows us what? He shows us love. He shows his grace, he shows his mercy, both presently and eternally. Presently, he sustains us. In fact, he sustains all things. He keeps us moving, keeps the world spinning, the moon in orbit, the stars keep shining, everything. Hebrews 1.3 says that the Lord upholds all things by the word of his power. Genesis 8.22, after the flood, God made a promise He said, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. It's by the Lord's will, his word, his promise, that creation keeps doing what he created it to do. And until God says stop, guess what? It's going to keep on going. And that's a comforting thing. All the world, all the world, the news is telling us that we're destroying the planet. I mean, might not be doing the best job. But the world's going to keep going until God says stop. And that's something that we can find comfort in. So we woke up this morning because God woke us up. We're still breathing because God put air in our lungs. Acts 17 says he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And that's just life. That's not a a reward for any righteous things we've we've done. God doesn't sustain us because we're good. Matthew 5.45 says, For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. And that can be about bad things as well as good things. If you're a farmer, rain's a good thing. Uh, You need it to grow your crops. Sometimes we just had hurricanes. That was devastating. That's the rain falling on on the just and the unjust. That's not necessarily the judgment of God either. That's life. But it makes you think of the, it made me think of the story of Job. Was Job a wicked man or a righteous man? He was a righteous. Uh, all, of his so, um, all of his so-called friends accused him of great evil and sin because of what God allowed to happen to him. He lost his family, his wealth, his health. Even his wife told him to curse God and die. He told her she was being a fool. So Job, I always love Job made a profound statement. He said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, Job understood this truth, even though he didn't understand why God was letting these things happen to him. He never lost faith in the Lord. He didn't curse God because God is good. He never really did find out why God was, why God allowed it to happen either. I mean, we know because we have the whole book, but. Job asked God questions at the end of the story of Job. Did God answer any of his questions, Pastor? I said at the end of the book of Job, uh, Job was allowed to ask God questions. Did God answer any of his questions? (laughs) Too wonderful for him. And there are things that God tells us, there's things he doesn't tell us in his word. We can rely on that. We can find comfort in that and just praise the Lord. Like uh, one of my favorites, I was telling someone earlier today, Psalm chapter 8, it asks the question, it says, what is mankind that you are mindful of us? It doesn't really answer the question in the psalm. It just gets caught up by the wonder of creation around us and praises the Lord. So, So there are things we know, things we don't know. We praise the Lord. Anyways, I got a little off track there, but that's okay. Uh, But the Lord sustaining us is more than just keeping us alive. He comforts us. He strengthens us. He encourages us. 1 Peter 5, 7 says that we can cast all our cares upon him, for he cares for you. He is is the God of all comfort. 
2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. When we're going through trials, difficulties, hardships, who do we cry out to? We cry out to God. Why? For help. Because yeah, he hears us. He delights to, to help us. <clears throat> What's that? He's the only one that can. Yeah. He's our strength, our shield. Uh, we learn to do this. We learn to cry out to the Lord through Scripture. It's all throughout the Psalms. Psalm 3 says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Give up, there's no help in God, right? But you, O Lord, or thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I awake, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God, for you have smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone and have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. So... <clears throat> One of the things I find that's interesting is you, as you read through the Psalms, it really teaches you how to pray, uh, cry out to God, like especially David. He's uh, on the run, a big portion of his life from Saul and various other enemies, and he's just describing all the bad things he's dealing with, and then at the end, he just starts praising the Lord. That's what we do. Life's not always easy, but we can praise the Lord and through the uh, good, through the bad, because God is good. So the Lord fights for us. He protects us. If you find yourself in times of trouble, what do we do? Cry out to God. Cry out to God. The Lord is good. He made and sustains us even though we are not good. In fact, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross in our place so that our sins can be forgiven and so that we can have eternal life in him. You see, we are sinners and sinners cannot stand before a holy, righteous God. So there's a separation between God and man, a gulf, a chasm that we cannot cross on our own. One of the tracks we got back there has the whole canyon crossing where there's a gap between man and God, and the cross is the bridge that lets us get, get to God. We can't get there on our own. We can't, make, we can't run fast enough to make that jump. Only through Jesus can we get there. Yet because God loves us, he made a way, even when sin entered the world in Genesis chapter 3, in the middle of doling out the punishment for Adam and Eve, he, God made a promise that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. One day, Adam and Eve's descendant would crush the head of Satan. God accomplished this through Jesus, through his death on the cross, and through his resurrection. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Before Adam and Eve sinned by disobeying God, God told them that the day they ate of the fruit, they would surely die. Did they die then? Not immediately. Eventually they did, right? Death into the world. Uh, first one to die was Abel. They got this, they, well, Adam and Eve didn't see, uh, see death immediately. They did see the effects of, of their sin. So no, they didn't die immediately. Eventually they did, but uh, something died in their place in the garden there. God killed an animal, made clothes to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness, their unrighteousness. God performed the first sacrifice, and that was the standard for a long time, the sacrificial system. So throughout the Old Testament, sacrifices, sacrifices were offered to God to atone for the sins of the people. Scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So they offered animals, sheep, goat, cattle, uh, frequently to atone for their sin. But that was temporary because they had to keep offering them again and again, and they were still looking forward to the one God had promised that would crush the head of the serpent. Once again, that ultimate sacrifice was done through Christ on the cross. 
God sent his own son into the world that he might live the sinless life we couldn't live and die the death we should have died. He died in our place. Our sins were laid upon him, and he paid the price for our sins. So he died that our sins could be forgiven. <clears throat> so how can we achieve this? Romans 10, 13 says that whatsoever shall, or whosoever, not whatsoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 30 to 31, when the Philippian jailer asked what he must do to be saved, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. John three sixteen through 17 says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So we're saved by believing in Christ. And then Romans 10, 9, it says that if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All of us, because of our unrighteousness, are deserving of the wrath of God. We deserve hell. But because God is good, he has given us his son, or he's given his son that we may have life, eternal life. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. 1 John 5, 12. And we have this hope, <clears throat> if you are in Christ, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Christ is risen from the dead, and death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, o Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works, and your thoughts are very deep. The Lord is good, and it's good to praise him. Anyone have any thoughts to tack on at the end? You have anything to add, Pastor? You always got something to add. What a God we serve. 100%. You said we had, uh, with Paul Pitts coming in, how many, how many people turned to Jesus? Uh, five at the Jude House and three here. Did he speak at the Jude House too? He did his, yeah. that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. can't tell. He's got a powerful voice. think he'd be teaching voice lessons. Yeah. And that's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So <clears throat> let's give thanks to the Lord because that is good. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your truth. Lord, that we can come to you in, in scripture. We can come to you in prayer, in good times, in bad times, when things are insane, when things are calm. Lord, we cry out to you and you hear us. Lord, you made us. You sustain us. You comfort us. And you saved us. 
even though we are fully undeserving of that, Lord, we are deserving of your wrath in that alone. But by the grace and love and mercy, Lord, we have salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that, Lord, and it's good to thank you. So, Lord, we lift up your name. We lift up the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and we pray for all who are here, Lord, that as we go out, we, you would open opportunities to proclaim your gospel, that sinners may turn and he hear your word, Lord, that you would uh, turn hearts and minds to you. Lord, we lift up the name of Jesus, the only name by which we can be saved. So we love you, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, tonight. <clears throat> we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Ben, do you have a song you'd like to join us with? Yes. <laughs> Are we going to give thanks for the song? Let's give thanks for the song. the Lord. I hope I'll stand up. So did you want to sing it? <laughs> did you want to sing it? No. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. All right, when I got saved, it was a happy day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that one today. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. He washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. He washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch, fight and pray, fight and pray, and live rejoicing. Every day, I rejoice, oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, he washed my sins away. Wash my sins away. Oh, happy day. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I just pray for all of us. We would have that joy down in our heart. And that you would, if anyone has lost the joy of their salvation, Father, restore the joy of their salvation tonight. Father, thank you for all the scripture that was read. May it pierce the heart. May it strengthen the foundation by your mighty hand and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.